What's up guys, John John the Wise here. Welcome back to another video involving Cyberpunk 2020 and Cyberpunk Red. Today I wanted to talk about net running, especially since net running has been changed for the new Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart kit. I've never played a net running game in any of my 2020 games or, or had a net runner in our party because of the same reason that most people haven't had a net runner. It was either seemingly too complicated to figure out what the game was or you know people just didn't want to split the party and there were so many different things that were different in 2020 that have been changed with the jumpstart kit so i really wanted to make a video because i have turned full circle on this whole thing so i went from somebody that had never played a net runner or had a net runner in any of my 2020 games to now wanting at least one net runner in my game at all times when I'm playing red. So that should give you guys an indication on how good I think the jumpstart kit rules are for net running. But before we get into that, just want to let you guys know, make sure you guys join our Discord. It is a Cyberpunk 2020 Red Fan Discord. The link will be in the description below. We have a cool community where people are, you know, making games. They're having GM advice corners. We have monthly topics where we talk about Cyberpunk. And it's really a whole lot of fun. And you, everyone is welcome, new or veteran. Now, you can't have a cyberpunk genre, in my opinion, and not have some kind of hacking technology or technological hacking going on in it. And I think most people would agree with that. You have technology, you have cybernetics, but you also need those guys that write the programs that get all the things that need to be done. Security cameras, I'm in, the hacker man. The essence of net running is pretty much the same. You have a guy that is proficient in going into the net to hack certain things. The only thing that has changed is the mini game is different. It used to be a whole thing with graph paper and and uh, the boxes to be honest with you I don't know the rules I'm very ignorant on the fact because when I saw them in the book I just skipped it but anyway you would have a mini game with graph paper and then your net runner would be in some kind of panic room or in the in the bathtub as we all jokingly say you know locked up and safe and he'll be hacking on the net while the party's doing something else in an Arasaka corporate tower or something like that and that really is a cool dynamic if the GM can do it well. It's just very difficult. I find it difficult as a GM to split the party and go like, okay, it's your turn, and then it's your turn, and then everybody kind of looks bored. It's, it's a really hard balancing act. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying I'm not good enough to do it. So if you're like me and don't want to complicate things, you probably skipped the net running in Cyberpunk 2020. So in Cyberpunk Red, what they've decided is the net is no longer what it used to be. You can't just sign into the net and hack somebody's um, social media profile from where you're sitting. Because in between you and them, there is an infinite minefield of black ice programs, which we'll get into later. But these are programs that can kill you for real. So if you die in the net, you die for real. Now in red, it's just too dangerous to do that. You can't be in your bathtub, in your apartment, in your panic room, hacking an Arasaka tower. You actually have to be near it. You have to be near a control node that you can be able to hack and then get into the system. So what this basically does is it puts the net runner in the action with the players. So what they did with the net runner is they broke it down into two categories, net actions and meat space actions. Meat space is the world that we're in. You can move and you can shoot. So you can only do one meat space action if you're going to hack the net. The second thing you can do is hack the net or net running. When you're doing net running, you have a certain amount of actions according to your interface level. That's how many actions you can take while you are net running. So one meat space and however many actions in your net running, that's how many you can do. You can decide that you don't want to hack and you just want to move and shoot. You can do that too, but if you do that, you cannot hack the net. So that's how they broke it down and brought the net runner into combat with you guys. So net running in Cyberpunk 2020, it's on graph paper, it has squares on it. It's kind of a game that you don't understand at first glance, but if you read and you figure it out, I'm sure you would. In Cyberpunk Red though, they've changed that. It's more like an elevator. 
Now, why is it like an elevator? So the way they've broken it down is every control node has certain levels of security on it, and each level is like a floor on an elevator. You're the hacker. You get into the system. You're in the elevator. You go down to the first floor. There will be one challenge for you there. Once you do that, then if you pass that challenge, you can move on to the next level. And it's supposed to be harder and harder the deeper you go. What you have in your arsenal as a net runner as you're going through this elevator is a list of commands. And you can just have like a little cheat sheet by you and you don't have to be a special net runner to be able to do all these commands. They're open to everybody. For example, one of the commands you have is called Pathfinder. And what that does is if you roll well enough, according to whatever your GM thinks is well enough, you will be able to tell how many floors are in this hacking control node and what challenges await you on these control nodes. Now, like I said, this is to your GM's discretion. And as the challenges get harder and harder, the Netrunner has to weigh their options. Is it worth going to the seventh floor my Pathfinder role wasn't good enough to figure out what was on that seventh floor, but maybe I can still pass it, you know, maybe it's something that I can handle. Should I go and check it out? Is there something juicy waiting for me on the eighth floor? Is the risk worth the reward? Or do you have better options? That's something a net runner can try to figure out with their party. Now that you basically understand how net running is, you might not understand exactly the numbers of it, but you get how it's done. Now I wanted to tell you guys about programs. I have broken down these programs in three categories for my own understanding. I call one a attack programs, the other defense programs, and then there are support programs. Let's start with defense programs. In the game, they're called black ice programs. These black ice programs personify themselves within the net according to whatever its creator has given its avatar. The example in the jump start kit is called a hellhound, and it looks like a giant murderous hellhound. The thing about these black ice programs is you have to defeat them to continue on to the challenges, so they will be guarding a floor. If these black ice programs kill you in the net, then you die in real life. So how do you defeat defense programs? With attack programs. The example in the jump start kit is called the ban hammer. And it's this giant hammer that does extra damage to hellhounds. Attack programs are a netrunner's arsenal of weaponry. Now the third and last programs are support programs. These are programs that have special rules that can help you survive or give you an edge while you are netrunning. One of the examples in the book is called Flak. If you are attacked by a Black Ice program, it negates the damage. There's another one that can increase your speed stat. And with that, you'll be able to be more elusive while you're in the net. So those are the three types of programs. Attack, defense, and support. Now let's talk about the most exciting part of the new Jumpstart Kit rules for net running, at least for me personally. And that is the new creativity aspect of it. Maybe this creativity was there the whole time, but like I said, I wasn't able to grasp the rules of Cyberpunk 2020's net running as well as I wanted to. Therefore, I skipped it. With this, it's opened up a whole new avenues in my brain of creativity, and we'll go straight into it right now. Earlier, we talked about the Hellhound, a Black Ice program that is in the Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart kit. Now, what that did for me is I thought to myself, well... What other programs are there? The Jumpstart Kit doesn't offer you anything else other than that. Obviously, there will probably more, be more in the core rulebook. So my brain started racing. I took the stats of the Hellhound, made it a little bit weaker, and decided to call it a Black Knight program. I took the stats of the Hellhound, made it a little bit stronger, and decided to call it a Cerberus Black Ice program. Now... I can't just name it and give it its stats, I have to give it a backstory too. Maybe the Black Knight program is more common, maybe it's one of those things that you can buy at the dollar store, that's how easy it is to get your hands on something like that. Maybe a Cerberus is a very rare program and only the rich and famous have access to stuff like that. And think about car manufacturers. With the new advent of technology, I'm sure they're going to put black ice programs in their vehicles. Well, what does a Ford 
black ice program look like or a GMI black ice program? What would they put in there? You know, what would it look like? How would it feel? What are its stats? And do they put it in all their cars or only some of them? As you can see, the possibilities are endless. Then we'll move on to attack programs. In the jumpstart kit, we have the Banhammer, and it does extra damage to Hellhounds. Wow, that really sparked my creativity, especially that second part, extra damage to Hellhounds. What if these attack programs are designed for specific Black Ice programs, like the Ford one we talked about, and it's called a Flapjack or some weird thing like that, a Carjack, and it's a crowbar, and it destro utterly destroys Ford Black Ice programs, and you can get it on the black market, and it's written by this guy and that guy. The possibilities for that are endless. Now we're getting into kind of like a fantasy element of it. That's very D&D-ish to have a weapon that is a magical weapon that does special things because it is a type of weapon that does that kind of thing. What if one of the attack programs is a giant sword that is similar to one that an anime character would wield because the guy that wrote that program is a huge fan of anime? What about some ultimate nunchuck programs with one swing it shatters into a million pieces but can destroy a black ice program in one hit what about a bazooka attack program that doesn't do that much damage to black ice programs but destroys a whole control node in its wake now the third factor about the creativity of this whole net running thing is the notoriety of it we touched on it a little bit earlier but who are writing these programs i'm sure if you're a net runner and you come into a control node and you see a giant blue dragon, you know, oh my god, it's so-and-so's blue dragon. And he's the most feared programmer in, in the world. And here I am, I'm facing his black ice program. I better turn and run because there's no way I'm going to get past this. That's the type of notoriety you can have. That's the type of notoriety your net runner in your game can have, your NPCs, your big bad guys, all of those things. And then there's the net runners that are known for creating attack programs that just annihilate black ice programs. And then they have competition with people that are writing black ice programs. There's going to be names, there's going to be notoriety, infamy, all that is present with net running in red. Now the only other things that I would say quickly about net running in red is number one, it's easier to understand for other players that are not net runners. You just show them exactly the layout of it. They, they, they can see that it's just an interface role on everything that you're doing and there's some strategy involved to it. So they can help, they can chip in and even if your net runner is doing their own hacking thing on the side, they can be involved with it. They don't have to sit on the sidelines because they don't understand what's going on. The other thing I would tell you guys about is something that I ran into personally in my games is net running outside of combat. We know what the rules are for combat, but what if you're not in a combat situation and you can calmly hack, then what are the dangers that can happen there? What I usually like to do is whenever my Netrunner has done their actions, I do some kind of random encounter. Maybe a guard is coming down the hallway and the other players have to help them with a distraction or something that they can do so the Netrunner can continue hacking. You can throw obstacles like that at them and not have to worry about how many actions they have within a certain amount of time. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope it was helpful to you guys and I hope it has changed your mind about having net running in your game. The Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart Kit is for sale. It's on DriveThruRPG and PDF form forever and you'll be able to get it somehow in some print fashion as well if you go to Artelsorian's website. I highly recommend that you guys get the Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart Kit, even if it's just for the net running rules. They're really well done, and it's changed my game completely. I can't play 2020 without the red hacking in it somehow, some way now. I have to have it. Well, we'll see you guys next time on the next video. Make sure you join the Discord. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, at John John the Wise, and make sure you listen to the podcast of the dark future with the dark future and i that we've been doing it's available on itunes and you can get it at the dark futures youtube as well all right guys thank you so much we'll see you next time bye